Hello, my name is Majron, and welcome to Ark Survival Evolved Beginner's Guide for the Ark Omega Mod on the Chaos Gaming Cluster. If you find this video useful, please like and subscribe. It really helps us out and lets me know that you want to see more content. I'm going to try to break this down into some sections for you guys to uh, minimize any confusion. So uh, let's, uh, let's get it going. Here we go. Okay, so when we first start out, uh, hopefully it's on a beach, so you have a few less aggressive dinos. Uh, you're probably going to want to start off by getting your starter kit, which you very simply uh, do slash kit starter. And obviously I don't have any kits left, but that's how you would do it. When you do that, you're going to get yourself an awesome spyglass, which is incredibly important because you need to be able to identify all the different creatures around you. So like this guy here is a guardian, as an example. He's a beta. Actually, I'm going to explain that later. This guy is a summoner, elemental, guardian again, all different types. So, basically speaking, this mod has effectively 13 different variants. These variants uh, all have different powers, abilities, specials, whatever you want to call it. And there's going to be multiple tiers starting from basic up to omega that you are going to have to tame. So, that being said, if you hit F1... Go to variants, you can see all the different variant types here. And then over here, you can see the tiers and then their stat multipliers. So basically speaking, uh, it starts off at basic, which is just your vanilla. And then from there, beta, alpha, prime, ultimate, omega, and then godlike, which don't spawn on the map, but you can turn your guys into godlike later by beating gods. Um, anyways, each uh, variant grouping has multiple types. And inside of there, you click on them, and you can see their special powers, what they do, so on and so forth. Uh, basically speaking, when you first start out the game, uh, you're probably going to want to kill the weakest things, if at all possible. But I'll show you what happens when you do kill something. On the left side over there, you see I got a Cosmic Soul, and I got some Beta Essence. The reason is, because it's a Beta creature, and it's a Cosmic. So therefore, that's what I got. <clears throat> Uh, killing creatures in the beginning is going to be important simply because you need the essence and you need the souls to get things like the Omega Workbench, the Imbue Bench, uh, and you're also to get equipment because without equipment you're kind of not going to be able to do much. Um, when you do your starter you should get a knockout club and you should start out by trying to get just basic dodos. There you go, imagine that, right? A couple basic dodos. When you get the basic dodos, you're going to be able to use their eggs. And when you get their eggs, you'll be able to get different kibbles, which you'll get from a kibble machine, which I'll show you here in a minute. Um, basically speaking, almost everything out here, aside from the, Macy, the basic dodos, will probably be able to kill you. Even this Lymantria will probably kick the crap out of you. Um, so when you're starting off, expect to, to die a lot. Uh, but don't worry about that, because your main objective is to collect souls and essence in the beginning of the game. Without souls and essence, you're kind of stuck in the water. Um, obviously, you'll still want to farm you know, your, your stone, your wood, uh, whatever the case might be, and f uh, thatch, get some tools, and uh, you know, start getting EXP to level up, because you know, leveling up is important. Uh, but outside of that, you know, the objective is going to be trying to kill some of these guys, uh, yeah, not all of them, obviously, 159,000 health, um, and getting some dodos to begin the game. Uh, so once you get some dodos, and you get some EXP, and you get some souls and some essence, uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step, and I'll show you inside of my base. Alright, welcome to my base. So as we had talked about earlier, uh, some of the most important things to start off with are the Omega Workbench, the Kibble Machine, and Crazy Potions. So basically speaking, in the Omega Workbench over here, we're going to have early set tokens. It is highly suggested that you farm as much basic essence and basic souls as possible because you're going to need sets. All these different sets have different powers and different abilities. Uh, some are designed for single combat and some are designed for AoE, some are designed for magic find, defense. It just depends on what you're going for. Um, as an example, the one that I am using is called Soul Scream. Soul Scream applies extra damage to the Ethereal Spear, which is an item that you can find by killing Ethereal creatures. You get lucky and you find it on the ground. Um, add some AoE damage, uh, add some different special abilities, and make it so that I can walk through the water unhindered. Um, there's a bunch more 
just like that over there, and uh, you can you know farm them up. So that's going to be probably your number one thing to start off with. Uh, secondly, is going to be your creatures. Uh, you know, getting some tames uh, inside of the kibble here, the kibble bench. You're going to have everything that goes from basic all the way up to omega. Uh, you know, really simple stuff here. You need basic dino eggs, like I talked about earlier. Just getting some dodos or even dilophosaurs or something like that to get some regular eggs. Uh, you'll need the corresponding soul meat basic essence and some berries and you're done uh, you make it you uh, go outside and you can knock one out with your taming club or you can pop on in here into the omega workbench and what you have to do first is you'll have to make sedatives uh, pro you know appropriate sedative based on what you've got so probably standard narcotics and basic essence from there you can go ahead and work on getting some knockout arrows uh, depending on, again, the, the correct corresponding tier. On the top left, it shows you how much torpor they do, which is generally more than the base stuff that you're going to get in, uh, in vanilla. Um, obviously, it goes up and up and up from there. Um, your basic progression will be standard arrows up to the darts, and then finally up to the metal arrows, uh, and go from there. Uh, so that's going to be your basic progression. Uh, to help you tame some stuff in Crazy Potion here, you just use the sedative. Sedative here, when you put it into a dino and you force feed it, it drops their food all the way down to zero. And then it basically is going to instantly tame as long as it has the appropriate kibble or higher tier inside of it. You'll be able to tame that creature instantaneously. Uh, so that's going to be, I guess, the basics for starting off with these workbenches here. And uh, we're going to get deeper into some of the other stuff about finding dinos and about uniques here in just a second. And so to help you get through the game a little bit better, uh, we have something on here called uh, Creature Finder Deluxe. If you hit I on the top right, you'll see it up here, this little marker icon, Creature Finder Deluxe. If you've never used it before, it's pretty simple. On the left side, you just choose the type of creature that you want, or the groups of creatures that you want on the top. You can select or deselect which ones they are. Just choose something doesn't make a difference what in this case. I'm just going to try to do it to show you. Choose Baryonyx. You hit the star in the top right to add it to the profile. And then at the very bottom or the bottom of your list, it will add it. When you click on it, it does a search. And obviously, there's no Baryonyx near me. I get rid of it because I don't really need it. Um, but as an example, I can choose Velanosaur because I know that generally this area has Velanosaurs. So here we go. Here's the list of Velanosaurs near me. Usually, it's within about one square and like a quarter square and a half away from your... Uh, position on the map um, so if I want to like track this guy I can click on him I exit out I see the arrow on the top go over there and I can see that 352 meters in that direction I can literally walk right up to him if that's not the case and I want to search for something a little more specific uh, I can uh, go to Velanosaur again and I can just type in let's say beta because I only want betas there we go. So there's all the betas that appear within that range that I was telling you about. If I only want wind or something to that effect, I can type in wind, and it's going to lead me right to the only wind Velanosaur within my range. Uh, it's not as simple as typing in cosmic or rage or something like that, but you get the idea. You can at least do a good search uh, in your local area for specific things that you are looking for. Now, uh, sometimes you will get very, very lucky, and inside of that, uh, you will end up getting... Uh, unique creatures and they will appear in their appropriate species locator and so as an example uh, let's just pull out let's see I don't know what's a fun one I'll pull out actually that's a potion one that's not a unique what did I do I grabbed the wrong one so let's grab up uh, Edward there you know, Edward's always a nice one that's what we do take Edward throw him out and if you look at him you can see that he is both a metal and a paragon type. So he gets both bonuses from both types. So paragons take a 90% damage reduction, and metal, I don't remember exactly what it takes, but it does take a certain amount of damage reduction. So if I were to go to here, I go to... Oops, he's not utility. What am I doing? He's resource. And I go to metal. You can see here, he takes an 80% damage reduction. So I don't know exactly how the math is done. I think it's something like 94% damage reduction, but these guys take almost no damage. They make amazing tanks. Um, they also get the bonuses from both sides on if there's any if there's any stat boosts. So again, back into F1, go to my variants so that I can go to resource. I can see that variants have a two times stat, and Lucky Class gets a four times stat multiplier. So he has an eight stat multiplier because he gets both. 
And like I said, if you are looking in the appropriate location, uh, you will find creatures like that very rarely. Uh, they're very powerful, they're very tough to find, but they're incredibly useful, and if you can tame them, it's going to help you, and it's going to go a long way. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is going to be, let's see over here, probably the Imbue Bench and probably the Fragment Grinder. So we'll get to that in just a second. So as you get further in the game, you'll end up collecting items that are useless to you. So as an example here, uh, I've got these gloves, these prospector gloves. I don't need them. It says that it has a random stat bonus. So even though they're primitive at the top, it'll say random stat bonus. As long as it has a random stat bonus, any item in the game, basically speaking, can be put into the item fragmenter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in these gloves here, and they're going to go into there. And I know earlier, there we go, I picked up just this basic fur chest piece. So what I can do is if I hit fragment imbued items, it's going to turn them into magic fragments if they're regular. And if they're set, it's going to turn them into set fragments. Now, I don't have any uniques currently, but if I did, they'd be yellow or uh, red in some cases. And they will give you unique fragments that you can use to power up your unique items. And that is all done through the imbue workbench. So in here... If I want to upgrade something or change the stats on something, so like this uh, charm here as an example, if I click on it, I can re-roll with one charm fragment. So I've got 91, uh, 88, yes, I've got several hundred uh, charm fragments here. I hit re-roll on it, and now it uses a fragment, and then it changes the stats on this charm. If I decide that I want to upgrade it, I can hit upgrade quality, and as you see, it went from primitive to ramshackle, Apprentice, Journeyman, so on and so forth, all the way up to Ascended. Now you can do the same thing uh, with your set items. You can do the same thing with unique items. I don't think I have one in here right now. But they all requ require varying levels of charm fragments, magic fragments, unique fragments, or set fragments, so on and so forth. Uh, you can also imbue uh, items such as saddles that have nothing at all. So I don't know if I have one in here or not. Oops, wrong side. I have one. Yeah, sure, we'll just make an Argent Saddle. Who cares? Perfect. So I take this regular old Ascendant Argent Saddle over here. And I can throw it in. Click on it. I can choose an Essence type. So let's just say I want to do Omega. It'll tell me that I need 36 Omega Essence, which I've got 85 in here. I will imbue it. And now, if you look, it's got a bunch of stats. And if I decide that I want to re-roll it, then all I have to do is hit reroll as long as I've got magic uh, fragments and then it'll go ahead and reroll it and give me bonus stats. Uh, the biggest thing that most people will agree on is that any type of damage reduction percentage, raw damage reduction and either uh, raw melee attack or ability power are going to be the main things that you want to roll for when you're trying uh, to upgrade well, mostly anything, with the exception of your equipment, which you need magic find. But that's basically how the imbue bench works. And later in the game, when you get soul shards, which we'll talk about later, uh, then you'll be able to use the cursed idol, but you could also ruin your item at the same time. That's why it's a cursed idol. Um, something that kind of goes along with these guys here, oops, lag, is the dimensional grinder. You can basically throw any item in here, quote, unquote, and uh, it'll break it down to its base components. Some items will give souls. Other will, you know, will give just basic resources, as you can see here. All different types of items. Uh, some will give essence. It just depends on what item you're breaking down. Very important to use that. It helps you uh, save time so you don't have to farm so much. It also helps you so you can get more souls and more essence, which are going to be incredibly important. Um, the other one that's incredibly important later is a gene splicer. Um, not going to get too deep into this. However, there are multiple creatures that you can add together that are not meant to go together, and they can get special bonuses. So one of the ones that I did just for fun so that I could show you real simple and easy over here, the Argentovis. It's an Argent and an Ovis mixed together. 
Uh, he can fly, and he also gets a bonus where he ignores any armor bonuses that a creature might have. So it's incredibly powerful because he doesn't get as much damage reduction from the enemies, and therefore he does more of like a true damage uh, style hit, whether it's with his biting ability, well, in his this case, ramming ability, or his uh, superpower, which is Starfire. So that's, whoops, there we go. That's touching on uh, the Gene Splicer there. Not going to go too deep into it as it's the beginning and it's a starter guide. And I'm sure later yeah, you will uh, have more questions and I'll have another video with a little bit more specific information on it. All right, so that's it for uh, some of those basics there. Um, I won't touch up too terribly much on breeding. Uh, it's important to do some breeding, but not a ton, at least in the beginning of the game. That's more of a mid to end tier type thing, uh, which I can go over that later. Uh, treasure chests are a big thing, which I'm going to cut to a small video that I created earlier, and you guys can check that out now. All right, so for treasure and treasure chests, as you can see, uh, I get the treasure buff in the bottom right, and that gives me a certain amount of time to go find treasure chests, and I'll kind of show you what that all looks like. So anytime that you kill a treasure creature of any kind, it will allow you to have a marker for the treasure. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to instantly find one. It just makes it easier. It's usually a green beam that almost looks like a death beam after you've died. Let's try to find one here for you. Give you an idea of what they look like. This can take a minute. Sometimes you slow down, it takes a second for them to render in or appear, but not really having any luck. This is basically what it's going to look like when you do it, though. None of this movie magic where you just magically appear. And they can be in water, they can be in mountains. Cliffs could be anywhere. Yeah, this server does save every 30 minutes or so. There we go. Alright. So this is what the treasure buff gives you. Uh, I'm probably going to have to kill this guy quick. Alright. Back to here. So, put him away for safekeeping. Treasure. So basically it asks for the amount of essence required. Hit E, you go into it, and as you can see, it gives you a bunch of different stuff. So some stuff is worth it, some stuff is not. Obviously souls are always worth grabbing. Soul shards, always worth grabbing. Wake up potions I like. Chest shard, never really found any need for it, but it's there. Gives you all different things, honey, multi-tools, whatever. Some will give you more. Uh, none of this for me really makes any sense, so I'm just going to toss it so it stops popping up. Oops, and then we're going to try to find another one. I don't know if that's one or if that's something else. Let's go find out. Oh, wow, ton right here. Cool. Try to show you some of the more valuable ones if I can. Ultimate Essence, there we go. There we go. So now, as you can see here, you're going to get, like, your boss tokens. These guys allow you to summon bosses directly. Let's see here. Gathering tool. Nah. Don't need any of this. Soul shards again. No whips. Nah. Should have put him away. I always like to put them away just for fear that, you know, they might get ganked or die or something like that. No. So, let's see here. If I go over to here, another chest, another ultimate. There we go. Paragons. Souls again. This is why it's so important to do chests. Because you're going to get some higher-end stuff, higher-end equipment, 
whatever the case is. The rest I can just toss, because I don't need it. Alright. Move on. Oh, don't have enough ultimate essence. Alright, so for the next part of the progression, based on some of the things that I showed you in the treasure chest, are Paragon. Paragon Souls. These guys here are collected by, generally speaking, killing creatures that are Paragons. Or, in the case of looking through the chests, finding the chests, or uh, killing the Paragon God or the Paragon bosses, which I'm going to kind of touch on here uh, at the very end. Um, so basically speaking, you're going to go ahead and you're going to search the world. You're going to find a creature that has the name Paragon in it. You're going to kill it, and it's going to drop one of these nice little souls. So basically, what we're going to do is you take one of those souls, and you feed it to your creatures. So, as you can see here, I got two of uh, almost the same creature. They're actually from the same breeding pool. This one is as godlike, and this one is Omega. Uh, as you can see here in the name, Omega Starfire Argentavis. This one is Godlike Starfire Argentavis with a bracket and a one. The minute that you feed a Paragon soul to a creature, you get the bracket with a one, two, three, four, five as you go up. Uh, every time that you feed them a Paragon soul, it is going to increase their stats by 100% of whatever their base stat was when you fed them. Um, so the best option is to either breed them through or know that you're not going to breed them through and just call it good at Omega and just go up the chain from there. Breeding is not required, but it does make life a lot easier. Um, so that being said, basically that is Paragons for you. A little bit of a cheat way to do it too is when you're inside of your creature finder. Let's say here Dynonychus as an example. All right. Obviously, I can look through these really fast because it's a small list, but if not, and it's a larger list, sometimes it's two or 300 creatures. Oops, wrong thing there. All you do is you do like Paraga or Paragon or whatever the case is. You do a search, and it will let you know if there's a Paragon near you. Uh, let's see here. I don't know if we're going to get lucky. There we go. Boom. So now we know that there is an Alpha Paragon Lystro uh, over yonder. And I'm going to get to show you, I, I guess, what one looks like in the wild. So we'll be back in a minute. All right, so I've tracked down the Paragon Lystro. And there he is. As you can see, the colors are generally going to be like a yellow-blue with some of that weird red that kind of appears and disappears. Uh, if you look at them, on the left over there, it says you can tame them with Lucky Kibble. Uh, Lucky Kibble, which nobody almost talks about for some unknown reason, is only able to be gotten, generally speaking, by killing Gobbles, which is a treasure god. Uh, the treasure gods can be summoned through uh, the boss eggs, or the god eggs, excuse me, after you get the boss beacons taken care of, which I'll give an example of here uh, at the end of this video. So we have two choices. We can either tame this guy or we can kill him. In my opinion, I would not tame an alpha. So I'm just going to kill him real quick. I know I made it look easy, but this guy that I have is quite strong. There we go. Once everything is away from me, no longer trying to kill me. Now I have him set to aggressive. I'll just put him back in. There we go. So once it's here on the ground, hit F, you hit E, you pick it up. You're done. That's the end of it. So now you've got the soul. There we go. Lystro soul. There it is. Um, also, super cool resource creature. <clears throat> element Jerboas, element whatever. As you can see, hundreds and thousands of element. They're not super rare, but they're rare enough that uh, you probably won't see them very often. So that's it for paragons and how paragons work and so i will go ahead and touch on miracles uh, as you're playing the game you will eventually find miracle creatures miracle gods miracle bosses whatever the case might be and when you kill them you will get a miracle bonus if you hit f1 and you go down to miracles you're going to see here uh, different bonuses that you get unique dino spawn rate increased by 50 percent I don't remember exactly what the rate is of spawn, but whatever that is, it's going to increase by 50%. So it's not a ton, but if you're searching for a specific unique dino and all you're doing is going to an area where there's a bunch of that dino type clustered together and you constantly kill them, it will increase the spawn rate of the unique you're looking for by 50%. There's two or three dozen 
other types of miracles and I don't have all the information on them and they can populate all the way straight down to the bottom and actually go beyond. So if some people go out there, uh, specifically end game people, they will literally kill 20, 30, 40, uh, you know, miracle bosses or miracle uh, gods in one shot and just fill this up and then go hunting for whatever creatures they're looking for or paragons or whatever the case is. Um, so just, you know, be on the lookout for these. Check them if ever you see that a miracle has happened. Uh, make sure that it's not something that's relevant to you or something that is important to you uh, so that you can increase your chances of either finding items, saddles, or dinos. Uh, that's basically miracles uh, in, in a nutshell. So we're going to move on here in just a minute. And finally, as promised, bosses and gods. So this is an Omega Beacon. Anytime you see it red like this, that means a world boss, or a world god in this case, can spawn there. When you hit F1, you go down here to Lucky Gods, and here's a list of the gods that can spawn here. As you can see, there's a timer on the right, in this case 16 minutes. A loot god will spawn. 46 minutes for Soul God, hour and 16 for Essence God, so on and so forth. And a three-hour loop for each one. Uh, basically speaking, these beacons will allow you to have world bosses or world gods spawn uh, for each individual that exists in the world. So if there's four of them, one out of four will get the spawn, the other three will not. If there's ten, it's one out of ten. If you're the only one, then guess what? That's where the boss is coming in. For our purposes, I'm going to turn it off because we don't need to. So just to summon in a regular boss... You go into it and you choose 100 souls of the type that you want. In this case, we're going to choose Cosmic Souls, because why not? And you can choose which tier you want. As you can see, Alpha, Prime, Ultimate, Omega, Godlike, Ancient, or swings back around to regular. For time's sake, we're going to go ahead and just do the basic tier. So I'll get on my dino here. And I'm going to get ready. All right. So in this case, we got the Dodo Wyvern. It could have been Mesopithecus or Megapithecus. It could have been Broodmother. It could have been Dodo Wyvern. Any of the vanilla bosses. After you kill it for the first time, you will get Tech Engrams. You will also get a bunch of loot that you see here, such as Element, uh, Health, uh, whatever. Just tons of little stuff to begin with. But most importantly, you'll get this soul. So then what you can do, pop back into here. And either you can put it into here. Oops, there we go. Come on. I'm hitting it wrong. Double clicking on accident. And you can put it in the trophy and it will summon the next level boss, which we're not going to do in this case. You have to take it out, put it back in. Really weird. Or you can use the Omega Soul to get the specific type that you want. And in this case, you don't need to do the specific type of souls. You can do 100 of any soul. So we're just going to do Elemental for the purpose of the video. We hit some boss. Go back, wait our 10 seconds, which is, I think, a bit overkill for the wait time, but that's fine. Here we are, got the Manticore this time. There we go, same thing. We wait. That Starfire, don't want to die. Pop off, get the soul. Now... If you want to turn one of your creatures into a god-like, all you do is you get yourself a god egg, which was created at the Omega Bench. Pop into it. Take one of these here red souls, so in this case Starfire. Pop into it. Hit Create God. This one takes 15 seconds to go. Look at that view. All right. And back to what we were doing. There we go. There he is. So we'll kill this guy as quick as we can. Takes a lot longer with a lower level creature, but pretty quick with it. Could be a little bit quicker, but still pretty good. And there we go. So now this time, it's going to pop out his soul. God soul right there. We have a Starfire God soul. So, I brought along a Starfire Omega RG just for these purposes here. So now we have Starfire Omega. 
we grab one of the souls here we feed it to this guy or this girl and now she changes colors if you take a look here we go her stats have doubled she has double melee double health because it's the first time that we doubled her stats perfect and so now that's how you change any of your creatures into the applicable godlike of their type. Now, that all being said, that's basically what I had for everybody for at least the basics and the progression from beginning to intermediate levels, or media, minimum tier. So that being said, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comments section for me. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I'm happy to take your criticisms. I'm happy to answer questions in the comments. Please let me know if you liked it. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good one. Thanks for watching.